Hello everyone and welcome to this week's short video tutorial. We will be doing bot number 26 from the free ebook that's available on the World Shang-Chi Federation website. Uh, I've translated the name as uh, Deception and Countermeasures in the Shang-Chi Opening. Uh, this would be another very interesting discussion of a very commonly played line. So uh, the book as mentioned in my earlier videos is uh, one of three books in a trilogy that has been uh, believed or <coughs> to be one of the most important books on opening theory in Shang-Chi for the past three decades. So without further ado, let us go ahead. Central Canon. Screen Horse Defense. Now in this board, as in the previous board, uh, in the previous video, P3 plus 1 is played. Now, P3 plus 1, upon playing this move, would allow for development of this horse and also hinder the, the development of the black horse in the same file. Black would usually counter in the same manner. And red would play H8 plus 9, preparing to play C8 equals 7 for the 5 7 cannons. Uh, usually, black would continue with P1 plus 1 to push both pawns to uh, prevent the development of this left horse. And another uh, use of making this move is, would be to allow black to play R1 plus 3 to patrol the pawn rank, protect the central pawn, and thus allow for black to play H7 plus 8. Because once uh, red would play C equals to 7, black would counter with H7 plus 8 to hinder the development of the left chariot. <laughs> And in this bot, uh, this would be the move that was discussed. Usually, uh, Black would play R1, R9 plus 1 to develop his left chariot as a rank chariot. Uh, but in this bot, Red would play H3 plus 4, threatening to capture the central pawn and gain a headhunter cannon in the process. This would be the move of deception. For older players, this would be the way to attack uh, back when this variation opening system first started about two or three decades ago. So players with a little bit of experience should be very, very familiar with this uh, opening line. Now for old timers like me, uh, who have play, even played this variation before, uh, this redwood seem to be very aggressive aiming for the headhunter cannon. However, uh, usually experience would show that Red would start off very very aggressively but somehow the attack would slowly fizzle out and Black would actually be able to claim the initiative and quite an advantage going to the big game. So there were two main variations that were discussed for this position. The first of which would be E3 plus 5, the second would be R1 plus 3. Now, as mentioned before, the main aim was to try to get a claim a headhunter cannon. Now, uh, once a headhunter cannon, or uh, if Red managed to gain one, he would be applying a lot of pressure on the black central file. And it would not, uh, black would have wasted the move if he had retreated his horseback. So one, the early way of uh, dealing with this with red aggression was to play e3 plus 5 to consolidate the defense and allow the chariot to be developed r1 equals to 3 or later r1 equals to 4 after the advisor had moved. And unfortunately this would be a very weak move resulting in a very passive position. Uh, this would actually allow reds uh, plans to come into fruition. They will continue to capture the central pawn and usually red uh, black would not want to capture the capture the uh, red horse because if he did check this can be seen this chariot would now be a very powerful entity it would be now 
pinning the black cannon and chariot in the same far and also threatening the black horse. The black horse would not have any good place to move, it can only move to the edge far because this pawn is protected by the red horse. So if it moved here, <coughs> red could play something, anything like c7 equals to 2 to try to gain material. Uh, another option would be to play r2 equals to 7 to attempt a checkmate uh, and apply a lot of pressure with another chariot later on. So, capturing the horse will not be a good idea and black would try to alleviate some pressure with c equals to 9. A trade of chariots would ensue, but red's central horse would not be a very threatening and powerful entity. Now, uh, in the book, uh, in the board, c7 plus 3 was uh, suggested. Uh, usually, uh, like for, for instance, when I play this position, I would try to play h5 minus 7. I think I need to go for a uh, pale corner horse attack or retreating the horse back to the back to the riverbank and preparing to go for h5 plus 4 or h5 plus 6 if the black horse moved away to attempt a elbow horse attack. Unfortunately, the black chariot will now be developed and the relative inadequate development of red's left flank would uh, become a major issue for red. So black would be actually faster in mobilizing his forces and will actually come out on top in this variation. Hence, h5 plus 7 is not advised, but instead, black, uh, red could be very aggressive with c7 plus 3, threatening to move the cannon again to the central file for, uh, for attack or <coughs> do a lot of other things. Now, sacrificing the cannon, and if black dead to capture the, black, uh, the red cannon, uh, the following would happen, but now let us see what would happen if red, if black allowed the red cannon to do mischief, because once it, it were not captured, red would play c7 equals to 2, preparing to attack the black horse, and which cannot move, or if a trade would ensue. And other, either way, uh, red would now have the heaven and earth cannons in place. So, after sacrificing the red cannon, Black would start to attack in this manner. This would be a discovered check. Uh, sorry, like capturing the horse, preparing to go for the elbow horse attack, of which red uh, black would defend in this manner. Red would then take his time to push his pawns. Notice that red would now have a two point advantage. And this is a very another very important move. The red pawn would. Uh, cross the river in the nick of time to protect the uh, to protect the red horse. The position of the red horse was not very desirable, and so uh, red would take the opportunity to push the pawn across the river. Now this is a very very versatile tactic. So that could be placed in a dilemma if he took if he traded <coughs> if he traded material. Uh, Sorry, the position of the chariot here would allow Red to make uh, threats with this horse once it advanced. And as can be seen, Red would have a very strong attack going on and he would have a slight pawn advantage. Now, Red would have the obvious advantage in this situation. Now, if Black did not capture the, can, did not capture the horse, the horse would retreat linked and again the horse would simply uh, go in a roundabout way and start attacking again and at this point in time we can see that both the left both the red horses would not be developed now in various situations whereby there is an edge horse if the edge horse were allowed to be developed it would usually be one of the signs that red had achieved a lot or would have increased his advantage in the opening phase. Now, 
both the development of the red horses and the ability of them to be linked would mean that red would have uh, increased his advantage in this situation. The development of this chariot would not be an issue, simply R9 plus 1 or pushing the pawn forward to trade pawns before attacking uh, the same file would be another possible option. Uh, sorry for the block nose, I have a little bit of allergic rhinitis. Okay, uh, back to the board. This was the position of discussion. In the first variation, e3 plus 5 was given, and in the main line, after trading chariots, black would, uh, this would be a pseudo sacrifice. A discovered check, capturing the horse, and to prepare for development of this left horse. Protecting the central pawn or the pawn ring. Pushing the pawn just in time. Sorry, the main line will be c2 plus 2. And uh, red would have an obvious advantage at this point. Now, in the book, uh, r1 plus 3 was the advocated counter for black. Now, one might wonder what would happen if black continued aggressively with h4 plus 5, thinking that he might be able to gain uh, a headhunter material or some sort of advantage in the situation. Black would simply capture it. Oh, sorry, uh, capture the cause. And black would retaliate without any qualms by capturing the uh, horse. Now, one might uh, fear for the danger of this black chariot because red could apply a royal skewer. So, wouldn't it mean that black would now lose a chariot? Because if losing a chariot so early in the game, this was the 10th fly, uh, it would usually mean that black would lose the game. However, this is when black would have a very brilliant move by retreating his chariot to the centroid. By retreating the chariot to the centroid, black could be prepared to play C equals, uh, sorry, C2 equals to 5 to counter. If red chose to capture the chariot as in the main line, check. This would be a discovered check. And although black had just lost a chariot, that chariot was a pseudo sacrifice, black would be immediately compensated by capturing this chariot. And as can be seen at this point in time, black would have the huge advantage because the cannon was still. Uh, being threatened by the advisors on the king, obviously, and it had no bit, no good, good uh, lines or intersections to move to. Uh, let's say, for example, he played h5 plus 8 to threaten the horse. The horse could simply retreat, and black would be prepared to play to retreat the chariot to capture the red cannon. And at this point in time, red's left edge horse and left chariot was still undeveloped. So, but could have a huge advantage at this point in time. Now, this, this is a very tricky move. So, I, uh, before reading the book uh, a few years back or years ago, I did not know that there was such a trap. But uh, this book opened my, uh, opened my vision of Xiangqi and showed me another side that I never, never thought of before. So, in the second variation, a short review. Uh, sorry, I shall review. This was the position of discussion. E3 plus 5 would seem to be a natural move to make, but would in fact lead to a passive position for black. The correct counter would be to play R1 plus 3, whereby the chariot was given up as a pseudo sacrifice, and, red would, and black would claim back his chariot later on with this brilliant discovered check. So, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this short but very uh, informative opening board on this uh, opening system. And uh, I hope your Chang Chi improves a lot. And if you like the work that I've been doing, please give me a thumbs up. Thank you.